Let us now continue with our class on the 37 practices of a bodhisattva. <clears throat> Let us now take a look at the third aspect, which is bringing disgrace onto the past. In the shloka, it is says that even if someone proclaims all kinds of defamation about me throughout the 3,000-fold universe, it is the practice of bodhisattvas to praise that person's qualities repeatedly with a loving attitude. Even if someone broadcasts all kinds of defamation about us surreptitiously proclaiming our faults so that such ill repute comes to pervade the whole of the 3,000-fold universe, we will not only refrain from returning the, we, we will not only refrain from returning the harm instead of furiously uttering insult at them, we will, with loving attitude that wishes the harm doers the mental joy, happiness, and well beings. In the past, I think it is a bit difficult to, to spread your um, a, a disgraceful reputation all throughout the 3000 fold world, especially in the uh, Tibetan area in the past, uh, since there is a lack of convenience in traveling, in communication. But nowadays, because of internet, it is very easy to spread all kinds of defamation through internet, and people would be able to receive all kinds of information. But as a practitioner, we should not grab we should not grasp onto those kinds of um, bad reputation. Even if we were to get disgraced by the reputation from such reputation from others. We should not generate any kinds of harmful feelings to the one who is criticizing you or uh, started to spread all kinds of defamation about you. Rather, we should talk about that person's good qualities. It is difficult to do so, but since we are practitioners of Mahayana, we need to do that. We need to take that into our practice. I believe people with virtuous roots at the time of studying the 37 practices of a bodhisattva, you will definitely experience transformation in your mind stream. For people without such virtuous roots or without those kinds of connections to this text, then it is possible that their mind stream will not be transformed. Doesn't matter whomsoever you would study it from. Um, so I think everyone would reap different fruits based on your different karma. Though nowadays we're studying this for as short as less than 15 minutes, but I really hope that you can try your best to practice it and to take it into your heart. And then from the precious garland of the middle way, it says one who is himself uncivil will hear unpleasantries. So the unpleasantries over here refers to the coarse language. If you used to speak of coarse words, then in this lifetime it is um, the, the fruition of such is um, defamation. That is why there are people who tend to get such kinds of uh, defamations from others, who get slandered by the others. And maybe some of them started getting very accustomed to being badmouthed or being disgraced by the others. Whatever kinds of causes it may be, I understand people tend to really care about the reputation. That is why people tend to reply to the comments that's posted about them on the internet and uh, so on and so forth. If you were to ask that person not to explain, not to do so, then they couldn't do it. 
they couldn't help themselves but to explain further, but to argue further on the internet, and that could accumulate to the eye-to-eye -eye attitude of revenge. But after all, whatever is said, whatever kinds of slander, whatever kinds of rumor, whatever kinds of disgrace, just let them be. Either those words were spoken about your Dharma activity or your own practice, just let them be. This is the best method. There is no need to hold on to it, to grasp it. Because after all, the words doesn't have any substantial harm that, be, that can be um, implemented on you. Over here, I believe many practitioners had been slandered by the others, such as, oh, you, um, you, you do not have pure precepts, or uh, you grasp onto the wealth, and uh, so on and so forth. All kinds of things were said about uh, myself and uh, Kampo Sotra Mudro, but just let them be, and slowly and slowly, people will see what is truly happening. Also, in the way of the Bodhisattva said the following, because they harm themselves, were angry when they slander us. But how is it that you do not begrudge those who slander others besides yourself? Well, at the times of being slandered, you need to investigate and see what it is. What is it that you truly begrudge? Is it really slandering itself, or is it that you hold on to yourself? Thus, even when examining the so-called disgrace, one discovers that there is no reason for anger and that it is illogical to become hostile. Moreover, from the way of the Bodhisattva, the honors of praise and fame will bring you neither merit nor long life. It doesn't really matter what other people would say about you because it doesn't really create any impact such as creating merits for you or make you to live a long life. In this way, fame and so forth are utterly devoid of any essence, so which one should be attached uh, to which one should be attached to. Also, for the sake of fame, one is even willing to give up wealth or to be killed. Yet, what can mere words of honor do? What could the mere words of honor do when one is dead? And whom can they delight? Since it is taught that the attachment towards the fame produces a faults, it is inappropriate to re relish it. However, words and fame doesn't have any substantial existence. They're simply, they're, uh, simply empty words. If you were to look at people throughout history, barely anyone throughout their whole life had not been slandered or harmed by words. Maybe just the very few of them uh, did not encounter those kinds of um, um, disgrace throughout their whole life. But so what, at the end? it really doesn't create any difference. Over here it says that it is, since it is taught that attachment towards fame produces faults, it is inappropriate to relish it. Nowadays, lots of the young Dharma teachers, they really cherish their reputation. They really want to make a good prop uh, they really want to make a good advertisement for themselves they want to find beautiful pictures for themselves to put on their um, nicely tailored um, biography and then they want to they, they really hold on to all of that at the very beginning of their Dharma activity but really it doesn't matter that much your merit to your quality and your knowledge will be recognized by the others if you really have that. Other than that, Lord Atisha explains, when you hear unpleasant words, regard them as an echo. A Kempo from here often would recite this particular 
teaching to the others. And they would say, and he would say that, oh, regard all those unpleasant words as echo. And when he heard how others slandered him, he was very displeased and started to scold such kinds of behavior. And then um, some other people reminded him that, didn't you say that regard all those unpleasant words as echo? If you can do that, of course, it would be wonderful. A student said to the yogi Shirab Dorje, there are some people who speak quite badly of us. The yogi answered, humans speak about humans, what else? Cut through your divisive talk immediately. When others were to speak of ill, uh, speak ill of you, you should recognize that people would talk to the others about other people. That's the only conversation they would speak of, and it is simply natural. For that reason, it would be better for you to stop all kinds of divisive, divisive words. Divisive words, I think this kind of language, to use this kind of language is very much related to your personality. Some Dharma teachers often would speak of faults of the others, and uh, that is because they often hear the faults of the others. But if it were to be for the other people, they probably wouldn't even care about the faults of the others. It doesn't really matter what other people would talk about the others. And to Shintong, it was told, if you have been saying, he said such and such, then since there is even gossip about those of a very high position, such as kings and ministers and so on, you should confess to have engaged in slander. Nowadays, there are lots of people who would create all kinds of unnecessary divisiveness within a group. And I have to say, it can be of collective karma sometimes as well. It could be related to the different locations of people and different groups of people. I believe it is related to where you grow up and uh, related to your disposition, related to the family that you grew up in and education and so on. There are families that would not pay much attention to the small talk, rather they would care more about those major issues and main events. And there are certain kinds of reputation to different families. Sometimes we can make observations of it as well. Lots of people would consider that they themselves are really great. But maybe because of their arrogance, they speak ill of the others. Look at Master Shenton. He started saying that you should confess to have to having engaged in slander. Most of the time, the mundane beings do not realize their downfalls. They do not realize that they themselves inhabit the, those kinds of uh, faulty behaviors. It is difficult for them to make observations of themselves. And then Sharawa said, no matter how much one would praise Kamlupa, Nutserpa, and Drapa, it was for them no different from talking about earth and rocks. And so they remained at ease. Whatever people and whenever people would praise you, it is just like how people are praising to a pile of earth or rock. They would not really take those praises solidly. They would not hold those um, uh, words very solidly. Similarly, they would not be bothered 
and feel great pain when others slander them either. You need to live in the present moment. Do not live in the speech of the others. Do not live in the uh, feelings or the perception of others. That would be of great pain. This yogi, he stated exactly the same. Do not care too much about others, um, criticize or praises of you. In the future, everyone will have very sensitive years and will therefore experience a hardship. As it is said in their life stories, even though Geshe Lari Tempa, Nirtupa, and others directly encounter defamation and slander, they did not become angry but practiced the patience. As to the inappropriateness of feeling attachment towards fame and so forth, Lord Atisha said, since all words of praise and fame are deceptive seductions, expel them just like spit. The masters of the past, they really dislike reputation or fame, rather. So nowadays, I think we need to also be quite low-key, do not create too much of a fuss about anything. You need to be very clear about that. Let it be the Dharma teachers or um, the practitioners over here. Do not post everything onto your social media. The other day, I saw another kenpo who posted his activities and uh, everything that he does throughout uh, in his life for a month or two. And he really felt that he's very open, and he felt it was really good. But in others' eyes, of course, there are people who would start thinking that he's quite shallow and he's quite see-through. I think we need to keep certain things to ourselves. Not You don't necessarily have to share everything that you, you say and you do. Otherwise, people may view you in such a way uh, just as watching a circus. According to Karaka, he said, fame is the deceptive flatter of the demons. As much as we really care about our fame, our reputation, such kinds of flatters could be from the demons. While you're very deceived by those flatters, it is. It could be easy for you to be defeated by the demons. When you receive some fame, maybe that's a sign for you to encounter some obstacles. And Yugurpa said, you should give rise to the notion of regarding fame and glory as an echo. Furthermore, from Gyalse Tokme himself, since fame and glory are pointless, give up clinging to them, and an unbearable tale of ill repute might resound throughout the ten directions, so that, as they hear it, all sentient beings will feel disgusted with me. If I see, hear, or recollect such, at that time may I remember my promise. When such kinds of ill repute that is spread it throughout different directions and remember such ill repute of mine, Gyalse Tokme said that when people started to spread the ill repute of mine, and when a lot of people heard of it and then know about it, and then when people feel disgusted with me, I need to remember my promise, the promise that we've studied earlier. When people slander, uh, slander us, when people um, harm us, we should not take revenge, rather we should see them and treat them with great loving kindness. 
at the time when we encounter all kinds of suffering and pain, encountering others slandering, encountering any kinds of adversities created to you by the others, you need to make such aspiration. If you can remember it at that time, that would be the best. He made the aspiration in this way, not only did he not feel angry, even if others circulate tales of ill repute about him, but with a loving mind, he prayed that his good qualities would resound throughout the ten directions. Aside from expressing others' good qualities, it was impossible for this great Bodhisattva to declare the faults of others. I think people can be very different. There are people not only would not like to hear about their own faults, but they would speak of the others' faults, but uh, Gyalse Tokme, he speaks of the virtue of the others and never the faults of the others. And because of that, because of that link of dependency, all masters and everyone else would only praise him um, and uh, offer him nothing but admiration, praise, and veneration, as is frequently told in his life story. I have to say that sometimes in my class, I don't really do the same. Um, I, out of good intention, of course, had to point out some of the situations that's happening in this dark age, such as charlatan TV such as lay inappropriate actions of lay practitioners and so on and so forth. But um, I really speak of those out of good intention because without pointing them out, people would not be able to distinguish them. However, the key is that if we were to praise others, we ourselves would directly or indirectly be praised and be venerated as well. Gelsey told me, in, within his heart, he really has that a sacred outlook, and for that reason, the other teachers and other people had a great impression of him and showed him a great admiration, and that's frequently told in his life story. Tirgana Jira Lonju Bay Tabum Sulendro Adur Shoo.